Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 36, please. Looking down uh, to, into the 25th, 26 verse. Let's go 26 and 27. I know we're using this verse on our Sunday morning series, but it's, we're using it in a different direction tonight. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Everybody say, keep my judgments and do them. Hallelujah. So God's word says here, I'll put my spirit within you. It calls you to keep walking my statutes. You'll keep my judgments and do them. And the key here is God's going to put his spirit within us. The one thing that had in the Old Testament, they never had the spirit in them. The Holy Spirit came on them. The Holy Spirit would come on them, but the Holy Spirit was not in them. Hallelujah. Um, real quick, I got, I got to mess you up here. But I think you have to reboot PC, study, not PC uh, song show to get it, to look at that screen. <clears throat> we got, that's one of the issues we got to get resolved. I see you back there struggling and just I think you have to get the shut, song shut down and start it back up clean. Hallelujah. So the Old Testament, the prophets, that's why they desired our day. See, they could only have the Holy Spirit come on them. They could only have the Holy Spirit in, 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 on them in a measure. They could not have the Holy Spirit uh, in them, which they wanted, but they couldn't have that. So the Holy Spirit here, he says he'll put his spirit in us and cause us to walk in his statutes. Keep his judgments and do them. Now, in the New Testament, we have uh, Matthew 3.11. Let's look over there. We're just talking about, talking about the promise of the Father. He will give us the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 3. Hallelujah. I need a little sticky thing on this, this thing. In my, my. We'll work out all the kinks over time. Hallelujah. I don't want to work out a kink with it flying off. But you know, that is why it's in an outer box. My, my, we, we just decided it was best for me not to even walk around with it until it was in an outer box. Just because my past. You might say, well, you're free from your past. Yeah, but my track record is I drop stuff. <clears throat> All right, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. This is John the Baptist talking. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, the word baptize comes from the Greek baptismo, which meaning to immerse. Okay? So when you're baptized, it's something you're immersed. Now, I've been immersed before. In war, I mean, not, 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 not even Christian baptism. I mean, have ever jumped in a swimming pool? You were immersed. If you went over your head and you were completely under the water, you were immersed. Amen. All right? That means there's nowhere around you that's not saturated, not covered with. And the Bible says that he'll baptize, he'll, he'll immerse us with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Jesus said in John 7, 38 and 39, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Listen to this. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now notice he said um, that out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Um, but in another place, we find the Scripture talking about that the eternal life was a well of, light, was, was a well of water springing up. See, the new birth is a spring of water springing up in you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a river flowing out of you. Why? Two different purposes. The well of life springing up in you is for you to drink from, to live, um, and to have a daily relationship with the Lord. The Holy Ghost flowing out of you is to minister life to other people. It is an empowerment. Remember Jesus, uh, and I'm sure we'll get there, but I'm about to run ahead of myself, told the Nateri in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon him, and then they shall be witnesses unto him. <clears throat> they weren't to go anywhere until they got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they needed that. There was a power that came from that experience. Hallelujah. Um, John, the 20th chapter, uh, a, <laughs> an old long-standing doctrinal dispute. Hallelujah. Who I've come to change my mind on. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Even old dogs can change their mind and learn a new trick or two. Hallelujah. John 20. And um, we'll start in verse 19. The same day of the evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples assembled for the fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side, and they were. Dis and then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this unto them, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted, and uh, unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Now I used to teach that the church began on the day of Pentecost. Um, others in our midst and dad Hagen and even for years I said well dad said but that's just because dad said don't make it right I just I didn't agree but I've come to believe that, that, that this is referring to the new birth they were born again um, and you think about it they, they uh, Jesus had been glorified Jesus had been resurrected they believed on him he said received the Holy Ghost see when you get born again you do receive uh, the Holy Spirit in the new birth and the Holy Spirit works in your life if you're born again you have the Spirit now, this is where Pentecostals and, 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 and denominations like uh, Pentecostal denominations and, and, and Baptist denominations would argue because the Baptists say, I got the Holy Ghost. The Pentecostals say, no, you don't. You know, you haven't been baptized. Well, like, well, no, you're wrong. If you're born again, you've received the Holy Ghost in, in, in the witness of the Spirit. You're born of the Spirit. Amen. That's, that's one thing that Dad Hagen said when people are saying, uh, them people, people who speak in tongues are of the devil. Well, then he, he said this. He said, very interesting. He said, within the whole Southern Baptist denominations of the devil. And that, that man, minister looked at him like he was crazy. He said, because the same Holy Spirit that witnessed to me that I was born of the Spirit is the same Spirit that gave me utterance in other tongues. He said, I recognize both of them. And that, that didn't go over real good. But anyway, um, hallelujah. So um, when you're born again, you receive the witness of the Spirit. You're, you're born of the Spirit. He, he, is, you know, uh, he is witnessing to you of that. But then there is an experience of the Spirit that is subsequent to the new birth. Let's look over now uh, into uh, Acts 8. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, there's some different things here. Hallelujah. I tell you, before we go to Acts 8, why don't we run on over to Acts 2? Uh, I, I don't know why I can just think I can just skip over Acts 2 now, like that's not there. Hmm. Y'all know what I mean? <laughs> just can't, you can't really ignore the fact that Acts 2 is in the Bible. I, I kind of just... I use it later in my notes on, on one thing. Let's go ahead and go to Acts 2. We'll start in verse 1. And it says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with all one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Uh, back at Acts 1. <laughs> Uh, Acts 1 4 says this. It says, They being assembled together uh, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And then when they were come together, they asked of him, Lord, saying, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put into his own power, but ye shall receive power, dunamis, the Greek word dunamis, miracle working power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, <clears throat> and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, if we take John, uh, what we talked about earlier, where Jesus said, Receive you the Holy Ghost, and put in conjunction with this, we see that if, if, if uh, John 20, 22 tells us uh, that, that the church was born then, and then this is saying you'll receive the Holy Ghost, he's talking about two different things. And we'll prove that out further through, through some of the scriptures. There's one passage that, that makes it so clear uh, you'd, have to, um, you'd have to lie. Romans, let's go to Acts 8. Hallelujah. Yeah. Or be dishonest. Or just be listening to somebody who's told you something and you just kind of took it without ever checking it out for yourself. Okay? And this we're going to find right now over in Acts chapter 8. Now remember on the day of Pentecost, it was fully come, they were all filled with... Uh, did I even read that? I jumped right past that because I went back to Acts, Acts 1, didn't I? 
Uh, Acts 2 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, it's not little big lighters on top of their head, like some pictures have, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And if you go going down, uh, Peter gets down there in verse 14, 15, 16, and says, this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. Then in the last days I'll pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see there they were filled with the Spirit, the spoken tongues, and uh, we'll, we'll make a more of a point of that later. But let's go on over to Acts 8, talking about this experience being subsequential to the new birth. In Acts 8, chapter 5, um, Acts chapter 8, verse 5, <clears throat> Hallelujah. Then Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. Many were taken with palsies and were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in the city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself, or that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Now, people could be deceived. People are deceived all the time. Oh, because somebody does something, that's, oh, that's God. Christians get deceived by other Christians who, who do something with fervor and think it's the Holy Ghost. Or they say, well, the Lord said. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's some people I'd rather hear a donkey brain at 10 morning at midnight, that's what Dad Hagen saying, than hear them come up and say, the Lord told me. Hello. Because every time I hear them say, the Lord told me, I, 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 all I can think about is all the stuff that they're doing in the flesh and not doing in the spirit and, um, and, and not obeying God in all kinds of areas. Yet God speaks to them every other minute about what to tell somebody else. Had a roommate like that. Anyway, glory to God. We, we don't have time for roommate stories tonight. All right. But I have some roommate stories. I ought to write a book, Pastor Ed's Roommate Stories. <laughs> glory to God. It'd probably be a bestseller. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, back over here in Acts chapter 8. <clears throat> and, um, and the people believed there was a great power of God, given out that he was some, uh, some great one. The people believed he had the great power of God. Verse 11. And to him they had regard, because of long time he bewitched them with sorceries. But when he, they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Whoa! What are they? Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you're a Baptist and they believed you're baptized, you are saved. You are saved to the bone. Amen? And they are. They're saved to the bone here. Then Simon himself believed also. <clears throat> and he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs that were done. Now, they've had people get saved. They've been baptized in water. Amen. Now, when the apostles that were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, if you got born again, you got all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get. This is verse 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What did Jesus say? Amen? What did Jesus say? He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen? Isn't that right? He said, go unto all the preachers of the gospel, every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. They went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them. Amen? Confirming the word with signs following. Here it says, they, they came down to pray for them for the distinct purpose that they, not to get them saved, but that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And then he goes on and tells you, 
I mean, if we had, if he had left out verse 16, it, it'd be kind of like, well, maybe they're, they're kind of in limbo, the salvation thing. But it says they were, he was not following on any of them. They were, bat, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had already gone through water baptism. So we can't be talking about the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Spirit being the same thing. We can't. That's why Philip, that's why Philip, um, I mean, uh, Peter and John came down to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying of the hands, the, the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Saying, give me also this power that whomsoever I may, may my hands, he may receive the uh, Holy Ghost. But Peter said, thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither lot nor part in this matter, for thy heart is not right with God. Now the word matter, there is it in the Greek logos. And uh, it, it can mean discourse, it can, it can mean, it, it's translated word most of the time. But it can be, it can, it can actually mean discourse, it can mean um, the word. It has different meanings, but, but one of the meanings here, and this is really what it is, if you understand it, um, literally it means matter of utterance. From the Greek, you have neither lot nor part in this matter of utterance. Now, we made that point here. It's because it does the same thing about them speaking in tongues. But something so spectacular. Now, I can tell you, if you'd been a sorcerer and you had bewitched people and they laid hands on somebody and said, receive you the Holy Ghost, they went away and said, thank you, I'm now spirit-filled, and walked off. He wouldn't be offering money to get that. He'd just start doing it. But he'd operate in supernatural. He'd bewitch the people with sorceries. And something so spectacular took place, he said, man, I got to have that. I'll pay you to give me the power to do that. Well, what could, what could have happened? Well, we, if we follow the biblical example throughout the book of Acts, when people got filled with the Spirit initially, maybe not subsequent refills. You know, you got places where people, that, people who are in the church got refilled later, but people, I'm talking about initial infillings. If we follow the pattern, they spoke with tongues. And here he says, you have to a lot in a part with this logos, this matter of utterance. Okay. You have to a lot in a part in this matter of utterance. Okay. Hallelujah. Look over in Acts chapter 19. We don't have to spend a lot of time there. I mean, that's, this is, you know, there it is. <laughs> Amen. Philip got him saved. Peter and John got him filled with the Holy Ghost. Can't be the same thing. Acts chapter 19. We'll look in verse 1. And, at a, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed to the upper coast, uh, upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, and he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And they said unto him, What baptism were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. And they, Peter, Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto people that they should believe on him who should come after him, that is, on Christ. Jesus, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What are they? Please tell me somebody. What are they? They're born again. Baptized in water. Ordinance of the church. They're saved. Then said Paul, John, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, back up. I'm, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Yeah. Now some people come, see, some spoke with tongues, some prophesied. No, 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 no. It didn't say, and some, and they, and some spake with tongues and some prophesied. It didn't say, and they spake with tongues or prophesied. It said they spake with tongues and prophesied. Y'all yeah. got your glasses on? Yeah. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know some of y'all laughing. Y'all looking over there at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Belinda's doing, boy, boy, Belinda's there working back there hard. She's trying to figure it out. Belinda, Bill's got to rebuild it. That's, that's the biggest problem. You're not, you are not the issue. <laughs> Software problems. Notice here, though, they were baptized in water. Then he laid his hands on them. And when he laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and then they 
prophes they speak with tongues and prophesy. Yeah. This experience of the Holy Ghost is different. Amen. Than being born of the Spirit. You can be born of the Spirit and baptized with the Spirit. Can you say amen? amen. amen. As a matter of fact, let's run on over to, um, I believe, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I don't have it in my notes, but I'm going to jump over there. Amen. Now, what did John the Baptist say about Jesus? We read that earlier. There's one that cometh after me who's mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost over John um, 7, 38 and 39. And I, I didn't get this other scripture. John 4, 14. This is back up in your notes earlier. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, but um, shall never thirst, but that water shall, give unto him, shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. So John 7 and John 14 share a different experience with the Spirit. One is a well springing up and the other is being a river flowing out. I, I, I missed that when I was going through my notes. So um, let's go back there and put it John 4, 14. So what did, what did John 7, 38 and 39 say? That Jesus would do what? He, Jesus, would baptize us with the Holy Ghost. But look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Well, who's the body? The body of what? Christ. It's not the body of the Holy Spirit. It's the body of Christ. Yeah. Amen. We are the body of Christ. Jesus referred to the church as being his body. Amen. The word of God throughout Paul's teachings and Paul's, um, uh, the revelation that Paul gives to the church. We are, we are members in particular of the body of Christ. Now Jesus, by John the Baptist declaration, would baptize the church with the Holy Ghost. But Paul says that the Holy Ghost baptizes us into Jesus. Then we read other scriptures from Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 19, that make it clear that the baptism into the body of Christ, the new birth, and the baptism into the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences in God. Yeah. Amen. Now, some people say, well, I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't believe in tongues. Now, that's another issue right here. Right now, I don't believe, well, actually, they do, they'll say they believe in tongues, but they passed away. And um, I, I just love how people like to pass stuff away. You know, I was wanting to pass something away. Well, that's no longer for the church today. And you know, that little girl came to the pastor one day, and she walked in with her bi the Bible cover. He said, darling, what happened to your Bible? She said, oh, pastor, every time you said something's not for us today, I tore those pages out of my Bible, and I expect to lose the cover today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, he had just, you know, that's not for the day. That's not for the church today. That's not for the church today. Why don't we just go see what, you know, why don't we stop trying to t say what's not for the day and accept the Word of God? And unless it tells us it's not for the day, yeah. it's for today. Yeah. Unless the Word of God tells us it's not for us today. Hello. We're no longer under the Levitical law. Right. You're still under the law of God. Some people preaching grace, they take the word law and apply it to anything that tells you you can't do something. No, we're not under the Levitical law. The law was, even the Bible makes it very clear, the law was added 430 years after the promise to bring us to the schoolmaster of Christ. It was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But now that we've come to Christ, we don't need the law. Not God's commandments, we don't need the Levitical law with its ordinances and rituals and washings and ceremonies. But you still got to obey God. Amen. People come on and tell you, I don't have to obey God, just dumber than dirt. <laughs> that was nice. Here, but here, so John 7, 38, 39 says that by, by John's prophecy, John prophesies, he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Then Paul comes over in 1 Corinthians 12 and writes in verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We're talking about two different things. Amen? Because if you look at this, amen, 
For by one spirit are we baptized in one body, whether we're Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we've all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. He's talking about the body of Christ. We're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. But after you're baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of church, will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen? See, the nature change takes place in the baptism into the body. The empowerment takes place in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How do you know that? Because Jesus said so. <laughs> he said, you'll receive dunamis after the Holy Ghost comes on you. Hello? The power, see? So the new birth is the nature change, the character development, the development of fruit, us being uh, reconciled to God, becoming in His image, acting like Him, thinking like Him, all those processes that go on through the renewing of the mind, through the new birth, and then the renewing of the mind for how you think and so forth. But then the empowerment takes place when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello? Isn't that right? Glory to God. So, um, we took care of yeah, well, let's get Let's talk about this. We, so, we've, I think we, with this, these, these scriptures, we've proven they're two separate experiences. Because you have no way to reconcile them if they're not. Either Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost baptizes you into Jesus, or we got a problem with them being doing the same thing to each other. I mean, uh, it being Jesus and the Holy Ghost at the same time when you're baptized, you know, well, they're, they're God. Yeah, but one is the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. And in Scripture, Jesus and the writing of the Apostle Paul makes a distinction about which one is in operation and working in these baptisms and how, what they're doing. John the Baptist did not say that J Jesus comes after him, he's mighty, and he'll baptize you with himself. Paul did not write here and say, Jesus baptizes us into himself. They make a distinction of which person of the Godhead is in operation and a distinction in what the operation is. It is one, it is in one case, the third person of the Godhead baptizing people into the second person of the Godhead, the body of Christ. And then the second person of the Godhead baptizes us with or in the Holy Spirit for empowerment. They are two different operations by two different persons of the Godhead. Well, I don't get that. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Some things are beyond your reasoning. You can't figure it out. Everybody always tries to come up with a way to do it. And sometimes I've seen some examples that are pretty good. But the, faith, the bottom line is, when you sit down and try to analyze how can God be one and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost all at the same time, your head goes tilt. It's It's... It's not carnally understood. You have to understand it with your spirit. And even natural examples are, are limited in their ability to really present that. Amen. So, we have proven, and I believe without a shadow of that, I don't think you can come back and prove differently. You can't give me any scriptures that, that countermand the ones we've already given you. There's not a scripture that says, Jesus, when you get saved, you got all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get. Now, man says that, but the Bible doesn't say that. There's no scripture that says that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So, you can't find a scripture that says that. Amen. You can't find a, a passage of scripture that relays that. We do have scripture that says they are different experiences. For the believer. Well, actually, one is you become a believer, and the other one you have experience as a believer. One makes you a believer, and then you have an experience in the God as a believer. All right? They are um, two different experiences. And um, so, there you go. Be excited. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Ah, I left one out. Where is it? Well, I'm kind of seeing some of these things you kind of run over top of each other with. Because when you're trying to say, make them distinguish differently, then you run right into they, they spoke with tongues. And I'm trying to, but I'm going to have to go ahead. Acts 9. I think we need to go there. I want to make sure we have this point very clear. Acts chapter 9.
Verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out, this is still talking about, I'm going to still be working on the point of um, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the new birth are two separate experiences. Amen. Uh, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem to prosecute them and to get, kill them. Paul was, Paul was zealous. Hello. And as a journey, he came near Damascus, and suddenly <clears throat> there shined a... Um, there shined round about them a light from heaven. Now, this was not glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace toward good men of goodwill. Hello? This was the Mr. T appearance of Jesus. Get saved or you're going to hell now. Okay. Y'all don't find humor in that? How many remember the 18? All right. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why? Because he's persecuting his body. Jesus perceived, or Jesus' uh, position was that if you persecuted someone in the church, you were persecuting him because it's his body. And Paul, he said, but it's Paul or Saul, who art thou? Lord? Paul writes later writes and says, if you confess him as Lord and believe in your heart, God's raised from the dead, you'll be saved. Why? Uh, he says, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Stop right there. He just committed his life to him. Yeah. Right here on this road, he calls him Lord. He commits to whatever he wants him to do. Doesn't he? What will you have me to do? What is he? He's born again. Yeah. Amen. He is born again. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by hand and brought him into Damascus. And there was three days without sight, and neither did eat or drink. And there was a certain man, a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And he said, and the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire of the in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Now notice it says here, and receive his sight. Just, just make that. And Ananias said, Lord, I've heard many things of this man, but how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here that he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all the call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings from the children of Israel, and I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, entering into the house, put his hands on him, and said, Brother Saul. Didn't say, heathen Saul, it's time for you to get saved. Yeah. Didn't say, Jesus sent me to get you born again. He said, brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou cameth, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, Jesus didn't say that. No, 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 no. He got more revelation on the way. And we lay hands on him and get filled with the Holy We have to know that because Jesus didn't say, we don't have a record of him saying it. He had to know this coming along the way, the Lord spoke to him. And immediately there fell as it were scales from his eyes. Uh, he received the sight for with and arose, and he was baptized. Now, I don't, I'm, I'm trying not to run way ahead, run way ahead, but it doesn't say here that he got filled and spoke. But you know what? Paul really writes, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than y'all. Amen. Well, when do you think he received it? When everybody else in the Bible that we, ever, we have record of that said they spoke with tongues and received it. When they got filled. Yeah. Now, this is the third case we have in the Scripture where they were born again and then later filled with the Spirit. 
The Bible says about the two or three witnesses that every word be established. They are not the same experience. They're of God. They are four people. First one gets you into the church, the other one empowers you in the church. They are four people to receive their, and they're in order to receive in the order of being born again and being, being filled with the Spirit. This is the third passage of Scripture we've given that they are two separate experiences. <coughs> and if you take John 7 and Acts 2 and put it together and say the church was started on, in John 7 and then Acts 2 they got filled, that would be the fourth. Hello? It kind of starts, the weight of evidence begins to move in the, not begin to move, avalanches to the position that when you're born again, you're born again, but when you're filled with the Spirit, it's a separate experience. It's not the same. Amen. And so we have to, we, we have to let Scripture defend itself, not some theologian or some, some denominational doctrine. Or what they teach. Well, we believe that God did do this, but that's passed away till the day the last apostle died. And, and then run off and use 1 Corinthians uh, 13, after, uh, 9 and 10 and all that to, to substantiate their position. And, and I, 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 every time I read it, I go, how in the world did you come up with that one? Devils! Somewhere in history, a devil got in somebody's ear and said that, that when that which is perfect has come was canonized to Scripture. People bought into it and started teaching it. Just because somebody teaches don't make it true. What does the Bible say? I got one for you. We're going to move into the next point, which will be next Wednesday. I'm not going to get there tonight. There are, there are churches, there are denominations, there are Bible schools that prohibit people speaking with tongues. So you can't come here if you speak in tongues. We don't want that in here. Yet, Paul wrote to the church in 1 Corinthians 14, around verse 29 or 30 down there somewhere, and said this, prohibit no man to speak with tongues. 39. Is it 39? Okay. I knew it was a 3 and a 9 in it. <laughs> Just didn't know where. Hallelujah. Think about that. He specifically wrote to the church and said, prohibit no man to speak with tongues or forbid no man. Wherefore, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Now, give me a scripture that says you can. I need to put that on my iPad, then I can play it and pick it up in the mic. That'd be cool. <laughs> All righty. So we have here um, the proof scripturally. Three extremely clear. The fourth one being, if you say that the church started in John 7 where he breathed on us and received the Holy Ghost, and then Acts 2 where they were filled with the Holy Spirit, that would be four things showing us that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the new birth are two separate experiences. Amen. And then, obviously, God said that we're going to move into next week um, that the, the initial evidence of being filled with the Spirit is speaking in tongues. And we'll show that. I know we covered, we'll have to recover some ground. And then after we, get, we finish along those lines, we're going to move into the gifts of the Spirit. And, we'll, 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 and that'll take us several weeks because we we'll probably won't get through. Um, we may get through each category in a, in a service, but I don't know that we will. We might. Talking about the revelation gifts, the power gifts, the vocal gifts. Um, then we're talking about walking in the Spirit. Amen. So uh, we'll probably be on this a good month or so, month and a half. Amen. Now, well, Pastor, we already, we already believe most of what you said. Why do you say, well, because either, either you need to be refreshed in it just for your own sake. Let's, I, I talked to someone the other day and just said, look, you need to pray in tongues. You're in a battle. You, you need to be praying in tongues and being spiritually built up. People, people forget stuff. Or you need to be... Uh, um, sharpened in your understanding for ministry so you can help other people. Yeah. It's never, it's a, so it's never wrong just to go back and reteach stuff and sharpen you. Yeah. Amen? All righty. So, we're, we're going we're gonna to quit there for this week. We'll pick up next week with um, uh, Tongues Initial Evidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 